Hey everybody, welcome to Pit Stops to Podium, the Rev Partners podcast where we talk to execs who have competed in one, taking their companies from high growth to high scale. My name is Brendan Tolleson. I am the co-founder and CEO of Rev Partners, and I'm delighted to have with me today, Charlie Paparelli for this podcast episode. Welcome, Charlie. Great to be here, Brendan. Always good to be with you. Yeah, I love our time together. And Charlie, I was, I was thinking about... Guys, we've known each other for over 10 years now, and I was trying to think about how to uh, give people a background on, on who you are. You've really done everything from building companies to investing in companies, and now you're in this kind of phase where season, I think you call really giving back in terms of what you've learned and helping other entrepreneurs on their journey. But uh, how would you define what you do, Charlie? Well, what I'm doing now is I, I've kind of moved. I'm, I'm sort of transitioning out of a 25-plus year career in angel investing which was all about helping, I called it helping entrepreneurs achieve their dream of starting and owning their own company. And now I've, uh, I've taken a lot of that experience and that network, and I'm now helping entrepreneurs uh, do the same thing, not so much from the investment side, but by interviewing other entrepreneurs and getting their stories out of them so that people can learn from them and what they've learned. Yeah, you. Uh, we'll, we'll get into some of the... Uh calls to actions that people can take at the end. But I'm going to do a teaser here, but Charlie is uh, an incredible writer and there's a, an amazing opportunity for other entrepreneurs to learn from him. And we'll get into that at the end of the episode, but uh, yeah, Paparelli.com. Just there remember, Paparelli.com. Paparelli there you go. The, the Oracle has spoken. So uh, <laughs> Charlie, before we get into our, our big idea, we have a tradition here at Pit Stops a Podium and that's to understand our guest outside of a business context. And so the way in which we do that uh, is really to understand three fun facts uh, about our guests. So if you don't mind, indulge our audience about some of the hobbies or interests you have or passions you have out, outside of what you do on a daily basis. Yeah, my biggest uh, passion, which really started in college, is uh, I uh, ride motorcycles. And I like to ride motorcycles fast and I like twisted. Okay, so I do a lot of North Georgia riding, but I also went to the California Superbike School which is something that a lot of people don't know about. So, you know, 150 miles an hour in straightaways with big turns. So, and wow. there I was 67 years old doing that. It was a lot of fun. You know, I did it. In fact, I've done it three times. Did it once with my son. That's what, one uh, fun thing. Well, what, what, what's uh, your, your brand of bike? Right now it's BMW um, uh, RT, okay, which is a sport bike, basically. It's a sport touring bike. It's a combination bike. So uh, I can go on longer rides without getting my back all messed up. <laughs> but it's, uh, it has a little wind protection for me so it's really a nice bike it's a lot of fun kathy goes with me too we're planning in fact to go to dinner i'll go for a lobster dinner later in july in maine oh wow so we're talking to take two weeks take some time going up to maine on the motorcycle and then come back down again so that's something that we have planned that must be that's a pretty good fun. lobster and kathy for the audience is uh Charlie's wife. So, uh, for a little context there. Years. So, yeah. outside of outside of biking and Kathy, what else should our audience know? Well, we uh, something else that's way off the reservation for me <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is Kathy always had this dream of own, owning land. Me being from Jersey City, New Jersey, that wasn't ever a part of what I'm. I really was interested in, but we have bought land, forty acres in Alabama on a river. Oh, wow raw land so i go out on this place and she just has a big vision for it and i'm just trying to catch up to it that's where we are right now <laughs> that's great i did not know that. that's a good fact yeah. what, what what's the third fact for our audience the third one is is kathy always uh was always thinking you know i think maybe i'm going to learn how to ride a motorcycle someday and i'm like that is not a good idea <laughs> okay <laughs> it's not a good idea <laughs> But what happened is we just put in an order for two electric bikes and they got oh. these big fat tires and we'll be able to do some off-roading, but we'll be doing it on what's the equivalent of a bicycle that does have a little electric to it. So uh, we can go up those hills and do those things. So we're going to get into electric biking or biking in general, which should be a, a whole new, you know, uh, experience for us. 
That's great. Well, I appreciate you sharing uh, some of the personal sides of, of your life in addition to what we'll discuss now. So, uh, so Charlie, you've, you've had an opportunity to not only build organizations, but also support them in that angel investing capacity. Uh, and so we talk about companies that are growing, going from that growth to scale. You know, building teams is, is certainly one core component of how you grow. Uh, and so I'd love to talk a little bit about those different stages uh, as it relates to team building. Uh, but before we get into those three stages, I think it'd be helpful to, to tell the audience in, in your perspective why team building is, is so important. It may be intuitive, but I think it's, it's important to unpack and, and define that. Yeah. I think the, the thing that's missed a lot in, in building and in starting companies and building companies is the value of the people. You know, we talk about people from time to time, but we're so focused on the technology or we're so focused on this, this concept of product market fit and process and all of these other things that we sometimes walk right past the people. But my whole experience, my 40 something years in business, as I look back, it's all about the people. All the value is in the people. You know, if you want to grow big, you have to have the right people. If you want to grow big value, a very valuable company, it's going to come down to the people. And if you want to be an attractive acquisition candidate, it's all about the people because the people mitigate risk for the buyer. Hmm. So you just can't get past it. People are the secret to, uh, to success in all that we do. I like that. To your point, it's often neglected and put on the back burner. And if you're in a software SaaS type model that the product is typically a star, but what you're describing is actually the people are what really inform the product and ultimately create the value around the product, um, which, is, which is great. Uh, so let's start, let's dive into this a little bit. Let's talk about stage one, Charlie, and this is kind of that founding startup phase uh, of team building. And, and so what does a team look like? Uh, and what are the, the key areas as it relates to what that, the role of the team, the importance of the team at that phase? Yeah, I'll call that first. I was thinking about what are these stages, okay? And this first stage of growth, I would put as the, I would, to, to use the term uh, of, that we've all accepted now, is that product market fit stage, right? You come up with an idea and you're thinking, man, I think that this really solves a problem at the, out in the marketplace. Here's the people that will probably buy it. So you got to figure that out. But that stage is really led by the founder, and the founders that I'm seeing more and more these days are not technical founders. These are people like yourself who have industry experience, okay? Now, it could be vertical market experience or it could be horizontal market experience, but they're experienced in some market and some type of, type of product. And uh, so you start with a founder and, and the founders out there flopping around with a PowerPoint slides, trying to figure out, okay, now that I got people interested, how do I build it? Well, they don't have any technology background. So the first thing that a founder has to do is find that co-founder. Mm -hmm. Now, I love in the Bible where it says, you know, it's it, two people, two are better than one and three are even better, right? <laughs> this is in the book of Ecclesiastes because if two are better than one, because if one falls down, the other can pick them up, you know? But the idea is that you can't be everything to everybody when you're building a company. You can be that guy that maybe is the CEO type, who's a good strategy person, but you don't have any technical expertise. So you got to find that co-founder that has that. And that's hard to do. I see people getting stuck with that all the time because that co-founder has to be lit up about the mission and the market and the problem as the founder. So it's not a matter of can they program something? Can they build a product? No, it's got to be this fit, this hand in glove fit. How hard is that to find somebody? It's like saying, look, you got a couple of weeks, find a girl, get married, build a family. Right. You know, we get that and we say, well, whoa, I don't want to get married till I'm like 30. I want to figure out who I am. I want to make sure I have a career. I want to, you know, I want to make sure I've got the, uh, I've, I've got a house that we can get, you know, if we get married, we can go to and all that and stuff. But, well, no, you don't have that option when you start a company. You start a company, it's like, man, I got to find somebody that's going to build this product. And then I, you got investors saying, yeah, you got to find them fast. And you go like, no, don't go fast. <laughs> go slow. No, go fast. You know, I mean, how do you do it? So it's I, really hard. That's the beginning of building that team. I remember when when you and I were talking about uh, us starting this company and this, the whole burn, burn the ships concept. But 
and, and I was talking, you know, you know, my co-founder and Matt Bolian, and uh, you, you talked to both of us about this whole concept of marriage and uh, that you like, don't, don't go into this lightly. Like if you are going to be a co-founder, it is not a, uh, a small commitment. Uh, you are really going this, you know, full board and it's more than just, uh, uh, it's not a transaction at this point. Uh, there's a lot more that's uh, on the line and, and it was certainly true. Yeah, they forget that building a company is is it's really a seven to ten year exercise. I mean, it takes a long time. And then you think, oh yeah, but someday somebody will buy. Sometimes they won't. So then this is what you're doing together forever. And you'll spend more time with your co-founder Matt than you're going to spend with your wife. Yeah. Because you're with him all day long. I feel bad for Matt for that one. But um, <laughs> well, so let, let's you transition. Have, you have a great co-founder there. So I, do, I do. Yeah, there, there's, I think one of the things that I love about what you were describing is there's a complementary skill set. One of the things that I've also uncovered with the co- like a co-founder type of model is it's not just like the synergy and the skill set, but it's also shared values. And, uh, and if you don't have that, it, it makes it, you could have all the strengths and competencies in the world, but if you don't have that kind of uh, layer or the foundation, if you will, it's going to create a lot of problems, but let, that's a, that's a topic for another day. Yeah. And let that last piece though is important. It's not only that, and a lot of people talk about culture and, and personality fit and right and values fit, but they got to be lit up about what you're doing. Yep. Matt was excited about what you were doing. You were excited first and then you got him excited and you got him excited enough that he was ready to leave his job to start this company. True. That's hard to do, especially yeah. technology guys. They, they got offers all over the place. Why should yep. I be excited about your market? <laughs> you know? All right. So let's, let's move on. So we're, we're in that kind of first stage as the founders and you talked about product market fit. So now you've established product market fit. Uh, what does a team dynamic look like post I don't want to say post, but essentially once that's established, because that, there's a transition two. point. Yeah, the stage two piece, I would call the build the, the process building step. Okay. So now I've got, I am, I, as Brendan, I can now sell this, which is a good thing. Yes. All right. But now what I have to do is I got to figure out, can someone else sell it besides me? Right. And yep. uh, so I have to find somebody that's a salesperson. And uh, the first thing I always say a salesperson is going to ask when they come in, they ask simple questions. They say, who do I call? What do I say? How much does it cost? And if you can't answer those questions as a CEO, you don't have a strategy. Period. <laughs> okay. As opposed to saying, oh, those are really good questions. You should go out there and figure it out. Right? No, you've got to find somebody that comes in and says, yeah, okay, now I'll make some calls. That was really good. Let's t- can you take a step back? Three questions to ask. Who do I call? What do I say? And how much does it cost? Is that right? That's it. Yeah. I like it. That's a good, good three questions. It's very simple and straightforward, but oftentimes you can't answer it. We can't answer it. That's exactly right. We start these companies. And it's because as founders, we're not in a lot of cases, we're not professional salespeople. And it all it, to us, it's sort of art. Like, I don't know. When I talked to this guy, it was different than when I talked to that guy. Well, you're not going to build any company that way. I have to get to a process. And salespeople are all about process. They're not about figuring out strategies. They want to know what they need to do. Who do I call? What do I say? How much does it cost? I want to go one to the other to the next. Bing, 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 bing. Sell, sell, sell. If I can get that, I'm making money as a sales guy. I'm excited about what you guys have built. Okay, we're now building something together. And maybe I'm one of your leadership team, which is a really cool thing. Yeah. All right. Outside of sales, anybody else that you want to highlight real quickly on the there is another side? usually in uh, depending on service whether you're a service organization um, or you're a um, product organization. Usually, what you need is somebody who's a a good a good ops person. In other words, they can keep the trains running on time, right? So we said we were going to do this, that the guy, the sales guy makes the sale. <laughs> and I'm, I'm skipping the marketing side, but the salesperson makes the sale and then it goes, gets flipped over the wall. Well, who's going to take it from there? Who's going to make good on all the promises this guy just made? You know, so you got to get those steps. You got to have that process person, that ops person in place to make it happen. Ironically enough, that was our first major hire was getting a ops person in that COO capacity. Uh, I did not lead you with that question, but I'm glad you asked it because it was uh, our first priority was if Matt and I are going to sell it, then we need somebody that actually can fulfill it and, and make sure that whatever we promise, we actually deliver. And then we can ultimately scale our delivery, which then allows us to sell. Wow. Um, 
But at that stage, so I call that what's this stage, this middle stage is so I moved out of product market by getting my co-founder. Then I finally get to my product market fit and I go to stage two and I have to build processes so I can I can replicate my sales and my delivery and all that starts to work. But it's working with what I call at, at the same time, you're building what I'll call the leadership team. Hmm. These are the key three people, five people, okay, that, you know, if I walk in as an investor, I go, man, those guys are a great team. They know what they're doing. Yeah. So that's that, that's that next stage, the build process stage. So now it looks like, hey, I bet these guys can grow this thing. Yeah, it gives confidence uh, to the market that uh, you have not only the product market fit, but the process that you just described, so you can actually scale Scale the organization. And to you, uh, as the CEO founder, you're not sitting there going, oh my God, I don't have to do everything. I don't have to have all the ideas. These people have ideas I haven't even thought of yet. That's when you know you got a good leadership team. Yeah, that's what I consistently hear. It's like, how do I, uh, I need to find a path to fire myself for, to make sure that I am not irreplaceable. Uh, and if, I, if that's the case, then you're not moving beyond just yourself. And that's certainly uh, an issue that I've heard from a lot of founders is that they get stuck in that phase where they can't move beyond themselves, which is critical for scale. Um, well, Charlie, let's, let's move into kind of, we've talked about stage one is that co-founder uh, stage. We talked about stage two, that's where you get into that leader, leadership team concept after part of that. Now let's talk about stage three. We're moving more into, I think you describe as the functional teams, correct? Yeah, that's where you get into. How am I going to really build this organization? Make it into something bigger to get past that million dollar ARR, if you will, annual recurring revenue. And to do that, now this leadership team, this new leadership team that seems to be able to get to a million or $2 million AIR, ARR, now they have to get to five to 10 to 20, right? To have that kind of growth. Well, to do that, they have to have this new skill. They have to become leaders and managers. So now they have to hire people within their area of expertise. So if I am the salesperson, now all of a sudden I'm a sales manager and I have to hire salespeople and I have to train them and I have to manage them and I have to have to help develop them. And then if, uh, and that's true if whether, even if I'm the technical lead, if I'm the technical lead building out the product. Well, now I can't do it all myself. I have to hire people. And now I have to take on the role of manager, not as the chief cook and bottle washer developer, the best developer that ever lived. I have to be a good manager. If I can't build out a team, we can't grow. Yeah. And that's true for all the other disciplines that are involved, which would be service, delivery, support, and all those areas. But the management team now is faced with this, this critical test. Will the individuals on the team be able to build out their area, their silo of expertise, of functional expertise? And that does, it's hard to find those first five people. It's even harder to see if they're going to make it. And you wind up flipping them out sometimes while you've got to get new people in and you're starting all over. So there's this ratcheting effect that takes place. It's two steps forward, one step back until you got that team in place. I don't know if this is a fair question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. In light of your experience and you think about these, I love frameworks. You're talking about this kind of framework for team building where you go from a founding team to a leadership team, ultimately to a, a functional team. Where do you see most companies fail uh, as it relates to this progression? Is, I mean, or is it just you, you find it all across the board? I think the biggest progression uh, failure really happens between the product market, that founding team and the leadership team. They never get a leadership team in place. So you, um, as an investor, I'm talking to them. They've been in business for three years and every, every ladder is still leaning against the family. He's still doing kind of all of it. And he has some good people, but they're not leadership team quality. Okay. They're just not there. He wasn't able to, or she wasn't able to bring in those people that look just like stars, like he or she does. You know, yeah, and that might be a, a future podcast where we talk about the uh, the profile of a leadership team and what are those characteristics and qualities because I think that'd be a, a really good episode. Um, well, Charlie, again, I really appreciate your insight. I know I've learned a lot. I'm sure our community has too. And 
frameworks to me are always a, a great way to uh, capture a, a broad concept in a consumable fashion. And I do also love your uh, your three questions that the sales rep asks. Uh, that, that that will stick with me for sure. Um, uh, but Charlie, uh, as as we wrap up, uh, what are some practical ways in which our audience can engage with you uh, and learn more of these amazing insights that you've been able to uh, share with the community over a period of time? Well, I've been blogging for over six years now, okay, every week. So I have a site called paparelli.com. You go on that site, there are, and it's all story-based blogging. It's not, it's not instructive type of thing. So it's, it's interesting. It's fun. So I've done blogging. And then last year, as we hit in the pandemic, I got into things called Zoom chats for entrepreneurs to help entrepreneurs um, solve problems that other entrepreneurs are faced with, just like they are. And now I've got into in-depth interviews that are two-hour interviews with some very successful people and a lot of people are learning from. So it's all on that site. All you got to do is submit your email and you'll be contacted Tuesday for the blog and on Fridays for the interviews that go out. Well, I highly recommend it to our audience. I know I have learned a lot. Uh, Charlie is a great person with a lot of wisdom and it's, it's worth to follow. So Charlie, thanks again for stopping by. We really do appreciate it. And we'll chat soon. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Brendan.